If you haven't been here for Tail Wagging before, Tail Wagging is my second podcast that I started just out of a pure love for sharing stories. Stories like fairy tales of Eastern Europe, which is where one of the stories is coming from today. And I just, I love really weird stories. I get super into them and then I just need to tell other people about them. I know it's odd, but I was just finding that I was always telling Dan about them anyway. I was just always like, you will not believe the story I just heard or something I just learned. Like there are so many stories from history that are absolutely bonkers. And then I would tell them to him and I would love the reactions I would get from him. And I just thought like other people need to hear these stories too because they're weird and not everyone knows about them. Uh, so the first story I'm going to tell you is a story from history and I'm trying to stall for time because Dan went to the market and he promised he would be back for a story time and I really want to share these stories with him. But I've got two stories about bunnies this week for Easter because why not? So I'm going to tell you a history story about the woman who gave birth to rabbits and then I'm going to tell you a fairy tale about someone who got to herd rabbits. And it's going to be very, very silly and spectacular. <laughs> and I'm still watching Lupin the kitten walk around the office and look for something to destroy. I, he's just got destruction on his mind. He's so, hmm. He's a very curious boy and he's very good at what he does. Lupin, buddy, what you doing? I hope he doesn't turn on the Xbox. When he was smaller, he actually balanced on the, the tray when it got ejected, and I was very, very, very nervous. I'm very nervous right now because he's touching the Xbox. Lupin, please don't. <laughs> All right. Lupin. You know what? Let's just get started on the history story. Dan will have to hear the fairy tale. Okay, I'm gonna give you a warning about this story. Normally I tell stories that are 100% family friendly. This will not have the swears in them or anything like that. But if you have any kind of trigger for dead animals or problems with childbirth, I just wanna give you a heads up because this is a woman who gave birth to rabbits and her name is Mary Toft. So this very, very sad and bizarre story begins 50 miles southwest of London, where a woman named Mary Toft lived with her husband and three children. She's described as short, stocky, and sullen. It gives you a picture of what we're dealing with here. Her husband made clothes, but he just wasn't very good at it. <laughs> oh, I think I just heard Dan. I'm going to stall. <clears throat> Dan, it's story time. Sorry if I just yelled into the mic. Tips, it was nice having you here. Have a good night, okay? Bye. <laughs> you don't have to. Please leave it. <clears throat> Sorry, I yelled into the mic again. He was going to run out and get like a bag of um, cat food that just arrived that's in the garage, but I don't need it right now. I actually can't fit it in the container yet. <laughs> Thanks for your patience. I know that this was really suspenseful. I like left you on the edge of your seat with a description of where Mary Toft lived and a very, a very basic outline of her family. <laughs> I think I don't even need to tell Dan that part. He can just jump in. It'll be fine. I mostly want him here for his reactions because he's really fun to tell stories to. <laughs> Did you wash your hands? Okay, good. <laughs> Hi, Dan. Hi. How you doing? I'm 
Welcome to tail wagging. Thanks. He'll just be slightly off screen you because he's he's been through some stuff already today. As if something terrible happened. I've been my whole life. Is this on good? The stream. I don't know. Can they hear me? It looks like it. Can you guys hear Dan? Yeah, it's moving. Okay, great. I just have to make sure I talk right at the mic. Okay. Dan, this is a story from history and it's super weird. It's the story of the woman who gave birth to rabbits. Okay. <laughs> so, this this takes place outside of London, and she already has her husband and three children. Her husband made clothes that wasn't very good at it. That part isn't really important. Anyway. Easy. I can't even follow <laughs> if you're going to talk that fast. Have they already heard this? Yeah, they already heard that part. The whole story? No, just that the first three sentences. Oh, then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Dave says hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Becky, Dave. Anyone else who's still on? Lucy? Okay. So in April 1726, 24-year-old Mary was several weeks pregnant, and she was weeding in a field. Now, this was a weird time in history, because back in the day, whatever you did while you were pregnant would theoretically impact your baby. Like, if you were sad, your child might be depressed. If you like got startled by something, your child might grow up really nervous. People believed you could choose the sex of your baby by eating certain foods. I got a bad feeling about this. <laughs> yeah, that's a good that's a good button from our soundboard. Uh, <laughs> if pregnant women were in contact with a mouse or a frog, they could potentially either scar their unborn baby or give them nightmares for their whole lives. Cherry pits might stain the baby. Eating a fish head might give your baby a pointed mouth. If a pregnant woman got it on with a man with stinky feet, a male baby might have bad breath, or the female baby might have a stinky butt. Looking at an ugly person might give you an ugly baby. <laughs> so basically, there's this term called maternal impression. And that's the theory that a mother's emotions and imagination could cause birth defects and disorders. Okay, now that I've given you all that background, back to Mary weeding in the field pregnant. Her life is not easy. She has to walk two hours to this field to work all day. She looks up and sees... A rabbit! She tries to catch it for dinner because rabbits were kind of expensive and it would have been a real treat to have a rabbit, but it escapes her and she keeps thinking about it. For weeks, she thinks about rabbits. She craved the different dishes you can make with rabbit, like rabbit stew, rabbit pie, insert the scene from Forrest Gump with all the things you could make with shrimp. Four months later, she became ill and went into premature labor. She called her neighbor, Mary Gill, who rushed over to see Mary hover over a bucket and give birth. Uh, Mary Gill's sister-in-law was a midwife. She was also called in because things were getting real weird. What was delivered was not a baby. Not a human baby, anyway. It was a monster. The family asked John Howard, a local obstetrician with over 30 years' experience delivering babies, to look at the remains. He found a lot of weird stuff. He found something that looked like... Remains? Dead? Yeah, it's dead. Oh. It's not going to make it because it's, it's not really even one thing. He finds, like, okay, here's a pile of stuff. In it, I see a pig's bladder. A cat paw. Oh, look at this. It's a cat head. Oh, three pieces of the backbone of an eel. How strange. <laughs> and then there were rabbits. One after another. Dead bunnies. But she's not done. The family keeps contacting him like, Hey, Mary gave birth to another bunny. Want to come see? He finally decides, well, um, if they're going to keep showing up, I guess I have to be nearby and monitor the situation. He has her move closer to his workplace. Howard found her like 
pretty difficult to work with. She had a temper. And over time, he just became convinced by what he was seeing. And he delivered several rabbits. She kept going into labor and having rabbits. So none of them were alive. And he kept them and pickled them in jars for study. In one day, she delivered nine rabbits. <laughs> so Howard is thinking, I'm going to be famous. This is like a medical discovery. He attempted to report the case to the medical authorities of London, and he wasn't taken seriously at first. But then King George I hears about it, and he wanted to know more. He ordered his court anatomist, Nathaniel St. Andre, to investigate. This guy, clearly an expert, he's a character. After a bunch of jobs like fencing instructor and dancer, he thought, hey, how about the life of a surgeon? That sounds good. I could probably make a lot of money. And after the bare minimum of an apprenticeship, he opened up a surgical practice and just kind of charmed his way into the king's court because he is super smooth. So St. Andre showed up at John Howard's house just in time to find Mary in labor with her 15th rabbit. And more followed over the next several hours. He just couldn't believe his eyes. Like, he watched as her abdomen moved. And he believed, bunnies are jumping around in there. Look at all those bunnies. I see them moving. I think they're burrowing in her fallopian tubes. This is science. This is absolutely happening. <laughs> he even speculated that the immense pressure of being expelled was the reason that the rabbits were born dead. It is really creepy, but he found it all very exciting. And he took several of the pickled rabbits back for the king, who was just completely dumbfounded. And he's like, she has to come to the capital to be studied. And for her trouble, she'd receive a royal pension. This sounds like maybe something good will come out of this. <laughs> you think that's what she said every day? She's just like, maybe, maybe someday something good will happen. So, St. Andre wrote about this. He wrote about these events and he's published in the papers of London. Mary Toth becomes a citywide session. During these times, human monstrosities were fascinating, and you could make a lot of money selling like pictures of conjoined twins and stuff. And since people believed women could influence the nature of things in their wombs with the power of their thoughts, it was plausible a woman could be giving birth to bunnies. The gossip, though, was really damaging to rabbit sales, because no one wanted to eat rabbit stew now that like, maybe rabbits are babies? Maybe that's a thing? Like, I don't want to eat a rabbit. There's some lady giving birth to rabbits. What if my wife gives birth to a rabbit? How would I feel about that? <laughs> but no one wants to look stupid, so King George sends a surgeon from his household. This guy has a fabulous name. I'm going to attempt it. Theriasis Allers. Yes, that sounds right. I'm not going to say it again, though, because it was perfect the first time. So he goes to triple check. He's not impressed. He dissected some of the specimens in his lab, and something's not right here. Because, like, he found, like, some, some, some bunny poop inside them with corn and hay and straw. How are these bunnies eating? There's no way. And, like... They were all over the place, like some were really, really, really little, some were maybe three months old. This is really inconsistent. So then Howard and St. Andre are like, oh, we got to find an expert that's on our side. And so they got this guy, Richard Manningham, but he wasn't really buying what was going on either. He saw some things and he's like, mm, this is super iffy. And he agreed, I'll keep my opinion quiet for the time being and recommend further testing. So on November 29th, Mary Toft is taken against her will to London for study. I mean, pretty much kidnapped. The patriarchy did not care anything for women's rights back then. They're just like, you're giving birth to rabbits, gotta go to London. She's locked away in a bathhouse. 
The whole royal court is just ogling her, and suddenly Mary stops having rabbits. Weird. She also developed a terrible fever, because I'm guessing conditions in the bathhouse weren't super great. And it's just a horrible situation altogether. But then a mistake was made. On December 4th, a porter was caught sneaking a baby rabbit to Mary's room. First he said, oh wait, this rabbit was going to be like food for her, which is kind of weird since she's given birth to him and we just established maybe you don't eat rabbits anymore. And then he's finally like, okay, she bribed me to bring this rabbit to her. And further investigation found that Mary's husband had also bought a suspicious amount of small rabbits from the town's merchants. She denied this up and down. She's like, no, no, I'm giving birth to bunnies. Didn't you see them? They, they came out of me. Whoosh, where, where do you think they're coming from? It's all me. But then the, the court said, you know, the only way to know for sure what's going on is we got to go do some exploratory surgery. We're also not going to ask your permission about that either. This is where she finally breaks down and confesses. Yeah, it's all a big, it's all a big deception. This is really bad timing for that Dr. St. Andre, that, uh, lo that guy in the court who had been the dancer. <laughs> Um, he had just published a 40-page pamphlet called A Short Narrative of the Extraordinary Delivery of Rabbits. <laughs> the London papers had a field day, and they were just gleefully tearing this guy apart for believing her. He lost his job. The medical community looks so bad. They look dumb. And then the reading public was not kind either. They pitied Mary as a quote-unquote stupid creature and a mere simple tool of her husband, who they thought manipulated her into the scam for financial gain. Mary apologized and she confessed. She blamed everyone. She's like, oh, my husband, my mother-in-law, the wife of the local organ grinder. Yeah, all of them put me up to this. But there was just so much ridicule. It, it's just like modern times. She would have been in like a whole bunch of memes but at least today she could have gone on Oprah and told her side of the story and everyone would have been like, oh, now we understand. This was just, you were a victim of circumstance. Here, write a book. Okay, so what happened? Dan, what do you think happened? I'm covering it up so you can't look. What do I think happened? How did she have bunnies? I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> Ask your mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what happened? How did Mary do it? When someone meets a bunny that they love very, very much. <laughs> okay, the truth was, Mary had been pregnant earlier in the year, but miscarried. <gasps> while her, I'm just, I'm going to say while her parts were still open for business, an accomplice put animals in her, which her annoying neighbor helped deliver. Yikes. And as the situation got more elaborate and this became a regular sideshow act, she actually sewed a special pocket in her skirt where she hid the baby rabbits. And then she, when the doctors weren't looking, she'd just stick them under her skirt and then be like, oh, I'm in labor. Oh, hurts so much. Oh, oh look, a bunny. Um, why? Why did she do this? Yeah, why am I here? Why? <laughs> Mary didn't want to be in poverty anymore. A quote from her said she wanted to get so good a living that I should never want as long as I lived. But she didn't make any money from this. She, she didn't make a dime. She was charged with being a notoriously vile cheat and imposter, which was something you could be charged with back then, and was thrown in jail for five months where continued humili humiliation was part of her punishment. Several times a week, members of the public were let in for a fee, and Mary had to just parade before them. Eventually, they let her out because the whole thing was embarrassing. They kind of wanted it to go away. They wanted people to forget about it. She, actually, she did make a little bit of money after the fact. There was some duke who would invite her to dinner parties as a curiosity. He's like, hey, hey, remember that, that lady who gave birth to buddies? This is her. She's at my party. What? Here, come look at her. 
Isn't she weird? So people remember Mary's story as the top fraud of the Enlightenment period, but history just kind of lost track of her life after that, except for like a petty theft conviction later on. Stole the bunnies. <laughs> stealing stealing bunnies, bunnies. Doing it again. Doing it again. Fire She's it back up. There, fire, Get the band bunnies. back together. Yeah, she just faded right back into obscurity and money theft. So this is the story of Mary Toft, the woman who gave birth to rabbits, one of the biggest scams of all time. And people bought this. What do you think, Dan? I think that most people listening to this are going to think that if this happened today, it would be, we would see through it and everything would be fine. I pose the suggestion that not only would some people fall for it, she would actually make a lot of money if she did this now. Not back then, but now, just, you know, she'd have a sponsor uh, for, because she had a million followers on Twitter for no other reason. Oh, yeah, like, <laughs> she would absolutely get a Netflix documentary first, just like Tiger King, and then she would get, like, a fictional series about her life or a movie, but probably the fictional TV series because then you could drag it out. It would all be on Netflix. Um, yeah, she would make some real bank now. Because they would at least want to know why you do this. 